Hi everyone! Recently quite a few of you non-native speaker teachers have asked me if it's possible to get a job in Japan as a non-native speaker English teacher. And I thought what a better way of explaining how you can actually get it, despite perhaps the initial prejudice against non-native speaker teacher and perhaps despite the job ads for native speakers only, than to interview a non-native speaker teacher who has actually made it, who has got a job in Japan and who has been working there as an English teacher for quite several years and very successfully. So in this interview with uh, Nicholas Susatio, we're going to talk about how he managed to get a job there despite being from Indonesia and being a non-native speaker teacher and how he's managed to succeed there. And specifically in this very short extract from the whole interview, he's going to give you his three top tips that have enabled him to find a job, a teaching job in Japan. And if you want to watch the whole interview, then definitely stay until the end of this video and I'll tell you exactly how you can watch the rest of the interview. And then I came with a tourist visa and then I made a business card uh, with my friend's address and the rental phone number on it just you know just simply to show employers that uh, I'm actually committed about living here, you know, um, and I think, you know, things like that, it's a, it's a really small thing, but it really matters, I think. Mm. So would you say that, you know, if people that are listening to this would like to, you know, try their luck in Japan, um, do you think actually going there first and maybe, you know, renting a flat and trying to look for jobs while you're there in Japan, do you think that gives you an advantage? Uh, it does because if you look at most of the jobs, I, I, actually, I think one of the biggest obstacles is not, you know, you, it's not, you have to be native speaker, but you have to be in Japan already. And, you know, how can you be in Japan already if you don't have a job? So, but, but, you know, I know, I know what, what they mean is you already have to be in Japan with a working visa, but they didn't really say that I was on a tourist visa anyway. Um, so I think that's the biggest obstacle. You have to be in Japan. So that's why my friend said, come to Japan. You know, uh, at least if worse come to worse, you don't get the job. At least you get to know the country a little bit. And uh, you learn something. You go back to your home country. You plan the trip again. You kind of learn, you know, you kind of learn what, uh, what to do next time. Mm. And were there any other things that kind of helped you get the job? So, you know, we kind of mentioned the CELTA, you said that that gave you an advantage and also then being in Japan, was there anything else? That's... Um, driver license, hmm. because a lot of jobs are in the rural area and preferably you have to be able to drive. And so I, I had my Australian license with international permit. Uh, so, you know, uh, I can drive legally and then once I get the job, I switch to Japanese driver license. But yeah, but driver license really helps. Okay. And was the question of, you know, you being a non-native speaker from Indonesia, was, was that ever a problem to any of the employers there that you applied to? Um, not me, but I understand if, you know, if, if when you apply, your grammar on the cover letter doesn't seem to be up there or in the interview clearly you have you know it doesn't show that you're near native level speaking and you know if if the employer realized that you know maybe this person couldn't do the job then maybe you will get some questions about it mm -hmm. but not not me at that time now Okay, so that's perhaps another important thing that, uh, you know, to take into account, make sure that your CV and cover letter are really written, you know, in very proficient English. And then if you feel that you're not proficient enough, then perhaps it's worth taking a proficiency course. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to watch the whole interview with Nicholas, then head to the link in the description right below this video and you can watch the entire interview for free. You will learn why having the CELTA 
is really a must if you want to boost your job opportunities when going to Japan. You will also learn what it's like to work in the state school system in Japan where Nick has been working for the last several years. And he will also share with you more of his top tips for non-native speaker teachers who would like to work in Japan. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in, then definitely check out the rest of the interview and click on the link in the description to this video. But hurry up because I'm not gonna keep the entire interview for free open for a very long time. So if you don't wanna miss it, then head there right now. And if you have any questions about getting work as a non-native speaker in Japan, let us know in the comments below this video. Really looking forward as well to hearing from you.